All right. So I'm back to fiddling with the CR10, and today we're going to run my little leveling script to level this build plate up. And while we're doing that, let's talk about maybe the possibility of adding smaller spools to the master spool initiative. What do you think? So I've got my leveling script all loaded up, which runs around the outside so I can level it while it's going. You can, you can watch a video about that. But while that's going, uh, let me talk about what's happened on the CR-10 so far. So I got my first successful print. Uh, I've got this, um, I really don't know what this is. Kind of, kind of a soft, squishy gargoyle abomination. It's not actually squishy, but it's, it's so soft. There's no details except for on the hair. I don't get it. It's, it's a test print, so there you go. But that test print was done on a raft. And I don't... See, my pappy used to always tell me... I, I remember when I was a, a young man, and I could tell he was looking at me. He was going to be giving me some of that wisdom that I needed so much when I was a boy. And, and he said to me, he said, If you ever use a raft on your prints, there will be consequences. Level that build plate and do it properly. And I've never forgotten his words. So while that's warming up, I'm getting ready to level it so I don't need to use a raft on future prints. Let's talk about the Master Spool Initiative and what that means for us. Ah, found the end pretty quickly here, which is good. So the Master Spool Initiative, for those of you who are not aware of it, was a initiative created by Richard Horn, a.k.a. Rich Rap. And the idea was to create a single unified spool that everybody would use. But more than that, he wanted to make that spool 3D printable so that you could 3D print your own spool. And then manufacturers, instead of sending you a big spool of filament either out of cardboard or plastic with the big spool that's weighing down the, the shipping cost, they just send a unspooled coil of plastic that's got like zip ties around it. You put that in your master spool, and then you uh, you use it. And when it's empty, you take it off and you get a new coil and you put it on there. I think it's a really neat initiative, and it's kind of a win-win for everybody. It's a win-win for the manufacturers because they get to save on shipping. And it's a win for the consumer because less waste. And you could potentially even buy your first master spool from, from the manufacturer. But the problem with these master spools is that they are all set up for the one kilogram spool of filament. And to me, these one kilogram spools are a little bit of a problem. I, I would rather have more smaller spools. Now, not to say that I don't want any big spools. 3D prints kind of boil down to one of two types. They're either useful or fun, and the useful ones, yeah, give me a whole kilogram of ABS or ASA. ASA these days are my choice, but I've still got a bunch of ABS left over from years ago of 3D printing, and uh, I don't need to be keeping all of this for that long. Okay, this is starting its rounds, and so I need to pay close attention to it and do the leveling and see if I can get it to look good. So let me see. Uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey, but left uh, means loose means up. So in this case, left means up. So left is actually tightening it. So lefty tighty. Okay, here we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think that's gonna, I'm just gonna let that finish and we'll see what happens. What were we talking about? Smaller spools. So with functional filaments like ASA or ABS, it's okay to have the bigger rolls, I feel, but for fun filaments, filaments like this granite filament, marble-like, it's got little flecks in it and it's really, really cool, but I don't wanna just use it on every job. And so it ends up just kind of sitting on my shelf waiting for the right job to come along which of course doesn't come along very often and meanwhile 
I'm losing this filament to, you know, spool rot as it just sits on my shelf and absorbs moisture and gets more and more brittle. Also, this glitter filament, it's absolutely beautiful. They've just released a pink glitter filament that I want to get, but I don't want to get it while I've got this whole big spool here. But if I had a smaller spool of it, say 250, 300 kilograms, or uh, not kilograms, obviously, grams, a, a quarter of this spool, then I wouldn't feel so bad about getting all of their different types of spools and just lining them up on the rows. Uh, this spool of filament is one of the first small spools of filament that I ever saw, and I was impressed by it. It's my copper fill filament. It doesn't actually have copper in it. It's, it's kind of like coppery-looking beads, but the thing is it's a small spool, and yeah, I used it rarely. I used it whenever I could find a good job for it, and it, too, is suffering from filament rot, even in this small size. If I had a whole kilogram of this stuff, I would have used a quarter of it and then had to just throw the rest of it away. Which kind of, I think, addresses the counter-argument to the smaller spools. People say, well, yes, but with a smaller spool, you're always going to have the waste, especially with everybody using these Bowdens setups. You're going to have this much filament wasted at the end of your spool. And yes, that's true. But when you've got to throw away the last half of a spool of filament because it's gotten so old and brittle that it's just breaking, plus when they get closer and closer to the middle, they're wound tighter and tighter. And for PLA, that's just awful for it. Now, of course, the master spool does address that by making the middle not so small. But I say... Why don't we make a smaller spool in the master spool? Just a separate, not, not to replace it, just an additional spec to it. I've recently been contacted by this company called Furlink, and their spool already comes in these smaller spool sizes. And in fact, they go as far as adding this little attachment that clips right to the side and that you put your filament through. And of course, at first, I was like, I'm not quite sure if this is actually doing any good. I was a little bit skeptical. But then you saw at the beginning of the video, this spool, I had lost the tip of it, the head of it. And I wasn't sure where it was. And I kind of had to unroll it from both sides to find it. And if I had this attachment on there, then this would have kept my head, uh, the head of my filament loose where I could find it, even if I had to loop it around. And so it actually, it really does do a good job. And, and I really love the colors that Furling has produced. They've got a beautiful array of colors and they're all the smaller spools. So there's no guilt about getting five, 10, 20 of them, you know, one in each color because they're the small spool and, and it's not a big deal to do that. They sent me an earth tone and a beige pink, which I used to print some uh, supporter tiles. So, hey, I got some supporter tiles to read out. I want to say thank you very much to Daniel Schmidt, David Wilde, David Jubert, Andreas Collar, Bruce Neely, uh, let's see, Carlos Cobain, um, Martin Sigurdsson, who previously had a tile, but it did not come out very good, and Mark Gibson. And the reason why I've got so many this time is because when I was printing with the beige, I was doing it on my Neva, and for some reason the top of them just came out looking awful, and I couldn't figure out what the problem was until I realized that I had this little attachment on backwards, and it was putting pressure on the filament and not letting it come out well. So, uh, good and bad, this little attachment, but overall I think good just from the trouble that it would have saved me. So thank you very much to my Patreon backers. I get to go find a place for these in the mosaic, and I kind of love doing that because it's a bit like building a puzzle. You get to scatter them around and find out where they fit, and I love that. But what do you think? Do Would you like to see more smaller spools, or do you think that the large kilogram spools will do well and, and turn out better for everybody? I'd like to hear your opinions in the comments below and as well if i have any other thoughts after i finish shooting this video i will put them in the blog so be sure to hit the comment section and find the pinned post with the link to my blog post for this video to get any additional information that i might have forgotten but i think that's everything today 
I want to thank you very much for watching, and I want to remind you, safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.